This is why you're never, ever, ever going to see Kamala Harris do the Joe Rogan podcast, Lex Friedman or Tucker Carlson, or even my show for that matter. I've invited her, you know, hey, Kamala, I'll say it one more time. If you happen to be listening or one of your interns, if you want to reach real Americans, real Americans watch this show. Why don't you come on this show and defend your policies, if you have any, and defend your strategy for moving our country forward? This was a terrible, terrible idea. Tim Walls went on the VP pick, the weirdo in chief. I call him the weirdo in chief. Went on Fox News Sunday and absolutely got obliterated. Now, look, they may see this as an election issue. We see it as a right of women to make their own bodily decisions. And that's what the states like my state have the ability to put that in. States like Georgia force women to cross the border. And then we have a death uh, of Amber Thurman. So let's be very clear. Trying to cut hairs on an issue on this is not where the American public's at. They want the restoration of Roe versus Wade. Vice President Harris said she would sign it. That's what we'll do okay. when we're elected. But to be clear, the Minnesota right law is women. far beyond Roe v. Wade. And about the Amber Thurman case in Georgia, her family has, and it's tragic, she is a young mother who left behind a young son. But what her family has said is it was a complication from an abortion pill that she received and she didn't get proper care when she went to a Georgia hospital, which had multiple opportunities to intervene there. Her own attorney the family's attorney says it wasn't the Georgia law, it was the hospitals. What he claims is malpractice, not treating for her when she clearly showed up in distress and still had the byproducts of her pregnancy because of that rare complication from the abortion pill. So just to be clear on the Georgia law and how her family and her attorney sees it. I mean, this guy is so out of his depth. In all likelihood, you always have to consider the vice president could actually be the president. You actually want this guy to be commander in chief. He doesn't know anything. He's so out of his element. Bill Ackman, the famous um, hedge fund uh, business leader, said he felt sorry for Tim Waltz because he seems like he's just way over his head. I don't feel sorry for this guy. I think this guy has ran Minnesota into the ground, and now he wants to do the same thing with our glorious republic at a much higher level. This is a very dangerous man. Here he is being destroyed by Shannon Bream on the border wall, which now apparently him and Kamala are in favor of. Check this out. The vice president has made it clear that she has policies that make a difference. Her border policies are the most strongest, the fairest we've seen. It's but the now, bill Governor, that was you know a lot of people, including your own party, would not join that statement. Face. There are millions of people who have come here over the last few years that, um, you know, they, they see this as an the open policies border. Disaster. Well, simply, we have a policy. Donald Trump sees it as a political. So look, James Langford in Oklahoma. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Dumbo. Hey, Dumbo. Hey, Dumbo, pay attention. Look at me right now. You're talking to a man now, you child, you infant, you petulant waste. You have the audacity to look America in the face. Didn't your handlers prepare you a little bit better than this? You have the gall. You have the temerity to look the Americans in the face and say that charlatan in chief, the most phoniest human being that's probably ever breathed oxygen on the planet, you're going to tell the American people that she actually has the strongest border policy when we've seen 18 million plus illegal border crossings. We've seen the largest illegal invasion in the history of our country. The very Border Patrol Union and ICE agents came out viscerally denouncing Kamala Harris and endorsing Donald Trump saying that Kamala Harris is the worst thing that could happen in this country. These are the people who are on the front line. You actually have the balls, Tim Walls, to say this to the American public? Uh, the Border Patrol agents, the Wall Street Journal, uh, the Chamber of Commerce He's all lost. said pass this legislation. You have to have Congress to authorize 1,500 new border agents. You have to have Congress to authorize DOJ to speed adjudications on these asylum claims. Those are things that would actually work. Donald Trump told us for four years he would deal with this. He didn't. He didn't build his wall, 2%. Mexico didn't pay for it. This is a real bill 
that has bipartisan support, it has the experts on board, and it starts to tackle these issues. And we don't have to resort to demonizing people. We don't have to resort to, uh, to, to making up or crafting stories, as Senator Vance said he did. Those things were not happening in Springfield, but it doesn't mean that we can't pass a piece of legislation to strengthen our border. That's what Kamala Harris is talking about. Well, She's talking Governor, about solving the of, problem. That piece no. of legislation does co- include the wall that you guys have been so, um, you've disparaged that. I mean, the vice president has as well, so I don't know if she really intends to move forward with that. But it was negotiated by three or four senators, and many Republicans came out against it long before President Trump indicated he didn't like it either. Look at that face. Is that the face that you want negotiating with Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping of China, Kim Jong-un, leaders across the world with the Ayatollahs, Hezbollah, the Saudis? You think this guy's going to command respect? My fellow Americans, they're laughing at us and they want to put Dumbo as number two in charge and the worst, phoniest Dumbo as number one in charge. I mean, this is insane. Is that the face of confidence? You're never going to see these guys do a show like this ever. We are 28 days away. You're never going to see another show like this ever. Here he is now absolutely getting destroyed by Shannon on trying to defend his radical, radical stance on abortion with no limits. I mean, if we let these abortion extremists get near the levers of power, we are in serious trouble, America. Listen to this. I want to clarify what the law is there in Minnesota. Abortion Finder, a website that helps women find access, says abortion is legal throughout pregnancy in Minnesota. There is no ban or limit on abortion in Minnesota based on how far along in a pregnancy you are. You signed the bill that makes it legal through all nine months. Is that a position you think Democrats should advocate for nationally? Look, the vice president and I have been clear the restoration of Roe versus Wade is what we're asking but for. But that this law is a goes far right beyond Roe v. Wade. To make her own choice. The law, does, the law is very clear. It does not change that. That was been debunked on every occasion. But, but wait, look, this wait. Is a, but let's, let's, let's agree. What you win- signed is there's not a single limit through nine months of pregnancy. Roe had a trimester framework that did have limits through the pregnancy. The Minnesota law does not have that. This puts... This puts the decision with the woman and her health care providers. The situation we have is when you don't have the ability of health care providers to provide that, that's where you end up with a situation like Amanda Zaworski in Texas, where they are afraid to do what's necessary. This doesn't change anything. It puts the decision back on to the woman to the physicians, and we know that this is simply something to be brought up to be very clear. Donald Trump's asking for a nationwide abortion ban. And again, we don't see this as a winning campaign. He said repeatedly that he will not sign a national abortion ban. Are you calling that just, it's a flat-out lie? That's misinformation. Yes, of course, and and, uh, Senator Vance has in the past said so too. Now look, they may see this as an election issue. We see it as a right of women to make their own bodily decisions, and that's what the states like my state have the ability to put that in. States like Georgia force women to cross the border, and then we have a death uh, of Amber Thurman. So let's be very clear. Trying to cut hairs on an issue on this is not where the American public's at. They want the restoration of Roe versus Wade. Vice President Harris said she would sign it. That's what we'll do okay. when we're elected. But to be clear, the Minnesota law right is women. far beyond Roe v. Wade. And about the Amber Thurman case in Georgia, her family has, and it's tragic, she is a young mother who left behind a young son. But what her family has said is it was a complication from an abortion pill that she received and she didn't get proper care when she went to a Georgia hospital, which had multiple opportunities to intervene there. Her own attorney The family's attorney says it wasn't the Georgia law, it was the hospitals. What he claims is malpractice, not treating her when she clearly showed up in distress and still had the byproducts of her pregnancy because of that rare complication from the abortion pill. So just to be clear on the Georgia law and how her family and her attorney sees it. And lastly, here you see Shannon confront uh, weirdo in chief on all the lies, especially him lying about being in Tiananmen Square. It's just preposterous when there's actual conclusive evidence that he wasn't anywhere near Tiananmen Square during that disaster. Check this out. Listen, before we go, because I wish that we had a full hour, I want to give you a chance, because you called yourself a knucklehead this week, to talk about some of your misstatements. Um, You've modified your story or explained that you misspoke about things involving your military rank, about carrying a weapon in war, your 1995 DUI arrest, using IVF to have your beautiful children, Gus and Hope, Um, being in Hong Kong and China in the summer of 1989 during the Tiananmen uh, events. 
a lot of people would say they couldn't get away with saying, I'm just too passionate, my grammar's not right, I'm a knucklehead. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the American people who think, I, I, I don't know that I can trust this guy with all those modifications well, to be the potential commander in chief of this country? Yeah, well, I think they heard me. They heard me the other night speaking passionately about gun violence and, and misspeaking. Oh, and and i got to be honest answer. with you, uh, Shannon. I don't think people care whether I used IUI or IVF when we talk about this. What they understand is Donald Trump. Excuse me. Excuse me. You're not running for assistant manager at Hardee's. You're running for the number two position, potentially the number one position of the greatest constitutional republic of all time. And you've lied repeatedly. And your woke mafia leftist Marxist media hasn't brought you to task once, hasn't held you accountable once. Why are you lying? Would resist those things. Look, I speak passionately. I had an entire career decades before I was in public office. Um, they know, and I'm very. Speaking passionately is not the same thing as lying through your teeth, you LAD lion ass dog. So that was an absolute disaster. He lied the entire time. Um, weirdo in chief, Tim Waltz. He just lies about Trump. He lies about Vance. It's all the same, parroting the same talking points that the woke media, that Obama, Clinton, Soros, that they all constantly and consistently lie and spread misinformation about Trump, about Vance, lying to the American people. It's literally election interference. And then here comes the phoniest of the phoniest. Kamala Harris goes and does a podcast called Call Her Daddy. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll kind of get an idea of what kind of shows and what kind of topics this show covers, because I can't even say them out loud. But listen to this unbelievably preposterous response from Kamala Harris, where the host actually asks her point blank, why are you here? Watch this. What made you want to do Call Her Daddy today? Well, I think you and your listeners have really got this thing right, which is one of the best ways to communicate with people is to be real you know, and to talk about the things that people really care about. I mean, what I love about what you do is that your voice and in, in your show is really about your listeners. <laughs> and I think especially now, this is a moment in the country and in life where people really want to know they're seen and heard and, and that they're part of a community, that they're not out there alone. <laughs> and, um, and so I'm really glad to be with you. Word, salad, meaninglessness, nothingness, vapidness, vacuousness, empty vessel, shell of a human being. Comrade, phony in chief, Kamala Harris. My favorite clip is when the host of the Call Her Daddy, you, she actually has the, she actually has the idiocy and lunacy to say that your show keeps it real. When they're talking about, you saw the topics that were circled. My God, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, this is like a bad dream. Host asks her point blank, why should we trust you, Kamala Harris? Watch this and check out the beautiful montage. Why should we trust you? So I'll say this. Look, you can look at my career to know what I care about. Roll the tape. All that is called Bidenomics. It's a term we're very proud of, I must tell you. Responsible behaviors uh, among everybody in the community, and just because you legally possess. This is when she was in California. Ruined my state. Home doesn't mean There's that we're not going to walk into that home and check to see if you're old footage, 20 years ago. Way you conduct your affairs. Have you heard? From you're considered the most liberal United States senator. I, I somebody said that and it actually was Mike Pence on the debate stage but <laughs> yeah well actually that nonpartisan GovTrack has rated you as the most liberal senator you supported the green new deal you supported medicare for all and yeah I am a radical <laughs> <laughs> if they fail to act as president of the united states i am prepared to get rid of the filibuster to pass a green new deal i am supporting the green comrade new deal. I didn't talk about the Green New Deal. You mentioned that, and it's a resolution that I supported, and I support the goal. 
And she's traditionally been soft on crime. She's traditionally been very supportive of sanctuary cities and protective of illegal aliens. Uh, I support our sanctuary law. And as a matter of fact, uh, she once uh, delayed the trial and protected an illegal alien who went on to murder uh, three innocent people. You know, for far too long, the status quo thinking has been to believe that by putting more police on the street, you're going to have more safety. And that's just wrong. And then when she was a prosecutor and the attorney general in the state of California, she declined to pursue the death penalty against the man who killed a San Francisco police officer, Isaac Espinosa. And then she also was in favor of passing Prop 47 in California. She supported that. That's the one where if you go into a department store and you steal under $950, you're just charged with a misdemeanor. I'm proud to stand with my colleagues and friends and support Medicare for all. I don't know if your, your insurance company is going to cover this. Let's eliminate all of that. Let's move on. Who here would abolish their private health insurance in favor of a government-run plan? Yes. All right. There's Kamala with her hand up. Raise your hand if, cover, if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. There's Kamala with her hand up. The idea that we would have a president of the United States that vilifies immigrants, that wants to build what I call his vanity project, a multi-billion dollar wall, which by the way will never get built. Because we have a president of the United States who has created a fiction about a crisis at the border around his vanity project called a wall. We don't need to build a wall. And by definition, just plain speak, basic English language definition, it is not an emergency is about a vanity project for this president. That's, that wall ain't gonna stop them. No. 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 Over 13,000 non-citizens have convictions for homicide. There are another 15,811 non-citizens convicted of sexual assault who are roaming the country right now Sometimes you just can't believe the stuff that comes out of her mouth. You would think that her handlers or whoever would prep her just a scotch better. You have noticed a little improvement in the cackle. She's not cackling as much as she used to because it literally brings out the vulture in her that we all know is buried deep in there and she keeps trying to suppress. But these lies, these absolutely laughable, baffling things that she keeps saying is just ludicrous. It's like they literally, I've said this many, many times, my fellow Americans in this nation, they think that we're stupid. They think we're dumb. By the way, that Call Her Daddy podcast host, uh, there was an article that came out in the New York Post today where she said the whole thing felt fraudulent. The whole thing felt phony and just felt like an agenda play. And instead of, again, doing real interviews with real reporters who actually push back on some of her insanity, she's now going on the Howard stern show tomorrow tuesday supposedly live and everybody knows howard stern probably has a worse case of tds than mark cuban and liz cheney i can't share the image i can't share the video but i can on x follow me on x and you'll see the video if you're really interested howard stern did a skit in full blackface and used the n-word in the most derogatory awful distasteful, offensive manner. That's who she's going to do an interview with. What does that tell you? I can't wait to get your thoughts on this. Give me your thoughts on Weirdo in Chief, uh, Tim Walls, as well as uh, what you just heard from the Call Your Daddy. I'm going to throw it out there one more time, Kamala. If you happen to be listening or one of your interns happen to be listening, I will be so grateful for you to come on our show, talk to us, and reach real Americans who watch our show. If you really care about America, you will care about defending your stance, defending your point of view, defending what you think this country needs. And I can't think of a better platform than right here with us. So I extend that cordially to you. My DMs are open. My email is nez at professornez.com. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. Check out these videos coming up on the screen right here. Subscribe and follow by tapping my face right there. Subscribe to our free newsletter, which is in the pinned comment show notes and description. I can't wait to read your comments. And as always, God bless you and God bless America. I'll see you soon.